Hi YouTube artist, I'm Kelly Hernig and welcome to In The Studio. If you've been following my 18 well palette and the start of my 100 day project, I have a treat for you today. Are you ready to see the color mixing chart? It is so gorgeous. I'm explaining these colors as rich and bold and decadent because of the possibilities. Are you ready? Is this not the most gorgeous thing you've ever seen? <laughs> I really love the depth and the boldness of it. It's such a moody palette. I've never had a palette like this, so this is really exciting. But what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to create one of these on your own. It is not going to be that extensive because this chart took me four hours to do because of the size and the little color shapes. So we're going to break it down, but I'm going to show you every possible way to do this, and we're just going to have fun mixing colors. Are you ready? Let's go. When I asked you if you wanted to see a mixing chart, a lot of you said yes. So this is my new palette mixing chart where it was my palette of 18 that you saw me redo my studio palette update. And something like this takes a long time. This took me about four hours to do because of the size of each little square. It's just tedious, but I thoroughly enjoy it. So I put on my favorite podcast or YouTube video and I just start working. It took me probably two or three days to just do it. So I didn't do it all at once because it's just easier to spread it out. And I enjoyed a little more if it's done in increments instead of all at once. So what I'm going to do is show you how I go about this. And before I go and show you the bigger chart that we're going to do together, I want you to notice how each row kind of has its own color. By that I mean you can see that this is definitely the red line. So it's red all the way across. This is definitely the sepia line. So it's brown all the way across. This is lavender. And you can see it has kind of a lavender tint all the way across. That is important by the way that I mix colors. And I will talk about that as we're working on the color in the smaller color chart. The thing that I'm doing differently is I don't do the same square with the same mix. So say this is uh, hematite violet genuine with quin burnt to orange. I'm not going to fill that here and then come down here and fill it again, right? Even though they're the same colors, hematite quin burnt orange and hematite quin burnt orange, you can see that they're different. This one's a lot oranger. This one's more on the hematite side. That is the difference with my color charts, and therefore I'm able to get out of 18 colors, this is 324 colors that I'm able to mix. And I think this is the biggest tool that artists don't take advantage of. Knowing what your palette can do for you with the colors that you have is huge. I mean, I would have never known that I would have gotten this beautiful array of colors had I not sat down and mixed it. And now each of these, I can kind of sort out to, let's say, 10 values. So I can take this color and I can go add more water five ways. I can add like a neutral tint and get a shade five ways. That's what I mean. So each of these possibilities can go out even further. But without even knowing what they would create, I would be clueless. All I would do is see these colors on my palette and be like, okay, I've got 18 choices. No, there's so much more. So as an artist, do yourself a favor and play around with color mixing. It is so life-changing for an artist to know what your specific palette can do for you. It just opens up color world possibilities to the endless degree, really. So what I'm going to do is I picked my five favorite colors on here that I want to mix. And I've put them on a chart here. Each square here, I have one, two, three, four, five squares by five squares. Each square is one and a half wide by one and a quarter down. I just wanted a pretty big square. I wanted to be able to splash them and see what they would do. So here is, you can see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. And what I did here too was in order for your colors to be comprehensive the way that I'm going to show you here, they need to be in the same order this way 
and the same order that way. So here I have Buff, Yellow Gray, Alizarin Gold, Joyce's Mother Green, and Hematite Violet. So here I have Buff, Yellow Gray, Alizarin Gold, Joyce's Mother Green, and Hematite Violet Genuine. The reason you want them in the same order is so that diagonally you have the true color. So that means where the buff and the buff come together, that's going to be buff. Where the yellow gray and the yellow gray come together, that's going to be yellow gray. It just makes it easier. And my big color chart is done the same way. I've got the same colors going this way as this way so that the huge diagonal is the pure colors. And I can refer to that often. If you jumble these around, it no longer makes the diagonal. That's why I'm really, it's really important to me to have the colors listed in the same way. As we go, I'm just going to be using a round brush here for mixing. And the first one that I have is Titan Buff. Now Titan Buff for me is a muting color, which it is making things lighter because it has white in it. I love the coloration and it's just going to be a lighter value, but I want it to remain kind of more on the Titan Buff color than the color that I'm mixing. You want to make sure that you have clean colors. See that? I would have to clean that off before I, take, before I use it. But Titan Buff here is pretty good. Okay, I've got five mixes, so I'm going to make four puddles. Okay. So the first one is Titan Buff and Titan Buff. That's the pure color. I always start with the pure color. It just gets me ready for what's going to happen. I'm going to leave a little edging around. That way I don't have to wait for colors to dry and I'm not worried about them running into one another while they're wet. This is Da Vinci Titan Buff, by the way. Okay, I had some questions about splashing. Do you see how wet this is right now? Let me find that. See how wet? It's almost puddle-like. And I do have a puddle here in the corner. You don't want to splash when it's this wet because all that does is push the color to the side. So think about if I was to add a big water drop here, it's gonna shove the, the paint. I don't want it to shove the paint. What I want it to do is dissipate through the paint and get to the paper and then start spreading. So as it hits the paper, I want it to then release itself slowly like this. Where if you're splashing wet and it's really wet, all it's doing is and moving everything all around. So take your time and just watch for it. I watch for it. Okay, see the edges now are starting to look a little drier. That's the perfect, see that? There's hardly any glare. That's when I splash. So splashing, I just dip my three fingers up to about the knuckle and then I kind of flick it down. My next color is Titan Buff and Yellow Gray. So I've already got the Titan Buff here. I'm just going to go into Yellow Gray a little bit. I just want to tint this to Yellow Gray. More on the yellow side. I want to see a change between that color and that color. That looks nice, but I want it much lighter than the yellow gray. So I'm checking here, does it seem yellower? Yes, it does. But it's still the light value, which is what I'm looking for. The yellow gray is a Holbein color. Love that mix. I'm gonna splash. The next color is Titan Buff and Alizarin Gold. Alizarin Gold is a powerful color, so I've gotta be careful here, make sure it doesn't change it too quickly. And you can see that's too dark. I need it on the Titan Buff side. Look at the difference between that and that. Okay, that's way too red. That's better, look at that. It's still a little too red. Perfect, okay. I'm gonna check it. It's still on the Titan Buff side, it's not pure red. 
you see how light it is that's what I mean by that I want it to be the I look at Titan buff as a lighter color almost like a tint of the color So I splash after every color. I will not be showing you the splashing for the rest of the time, but know that I am splashing after every color. The next color is Titan Buff and Joyce's Mother Green. A little too green. Let's try it. Yeah, that's nice. It's different than all of these, but it's still on the light side. The last color in the row is Titan Buff and Hematite Violet Genuine. Now Hematite is a granulating color, so I want to make sure that I water down my brush just a little. My paint, I mean. Perfect. Yep. Now what I want you to see is look how light and beautiful that row is. It seems like a pastelish row. And you'll see as we start adding darker and darker colors how light that really is. Our next color is yellow gray, and I'm going to do yellow gray and yellow gray. So, yellow gray and yellow gray. Now do you see what I mean? That is much lighter than this. Now we have yellow gray and Titan buff. So I now want things to be on the yellow gray side which means more yellow. So all I want this Titan to do is just kind of tone it down. So when I put it down, I want it to be heavier than that, so darker, but yet lighter than that because it is like, think of it as a tint. This is perfect. You see the difference? Even though that is the same color mix as that, this was just Titan Buff and Yellow Gray, this is Yellow Gray and Titan Buff. The next color is Yellow Gray and Alizarin Gold. Okay, you can see that it's red. I want it to be on the yellow side. Remember, this is about the yellow gold. It can have a little bit of an orange inflection, but I still want it to seem more yellow than gold. That's nice. Do you see the difference? That feels a little oranger, so think of more of a yellow orange. And this is why I also do this color first so that I know what it's supposed to look like and what it actually looks like as I'm mixing. That's a beautiful like Rossi Anna color there. I love that. 
The next color is yellow gray and Joyce's mother green. Now this should be on the green side, but it should still be more yellow green than green green. So you can see that's more green. So I need to add the yellow. Ooh, that's pretty. You can see it's more on the green side than the original color there. And the last color in this row is yellow gray and hematite violet genuine. Add a little bit more yellow here. So this hematite is going to add a little darker, so a little more brownish color. You can see that's too brown. It doesn't look yellow anymore. So I'm going to add a little bit more yellow to that. I think that's nice. It's still on the yellow side, but it's a dark color, which it needs to be. Hematite is a dark color. Are you noticing the difference now? Do you see how it's already standing out by, that is definitely the buff titanium. Look how much lighter it is than a natural color. And you can see these are all just variations of yellow, which I absolutely love. The next color is alizarin gold. Now this is more of, think of a corally red. It's really beautiful. It's really kind of intense. So I'm anxious to see what that is. This is a da Vinci color. And it's a color I fell in love with right away as I was swatching it. So we got alizarin gold and alizarin gold. Look at this color. Ooh, so pretty. When I first swatched this in the Da Vinci swatches, I was like, this color has to go on my palette somewhere. It is amazing. And I am actually loving all of the mixes that it creates all of the colors. Okay, we've got Alizarin Gold and Titan Buff. Perfect. See how it just kind of muted it down? Look at the difference between that and that. Now I want to make sure, this is Titan Buff and Alizarin Gold, I want to make sure that it's bolder and it definitely is. Just a way to double check yourself because I want each mix to be different. Wow, that's pretty. We have a lizard gold and yellow gray. So let's see what this color will make. And you can see I got a lot of the yellow gray, so I need to add some more alizarin. Remember, it's got to be on the red side, not this greenish side. I think that's good. Let's check it out. Yes, it's duller. Look at how dull that is. Now this is the yellow gray and alizarin gold. You can see that that's gold. This one is definitely more alizarin. Perfect. Now when working with lighter yellows, like say a Hansa yellow or a lemon yellow, you're going to have a hard time keeping the bright yellow because it is such a light color. So just know sometimes they don't always work as great as these colors are doing but just try to keep them to their truest color. Now we have Alizarin Gold and Joyce's Mother Green. This is a intense color, so we gotta make sure we just use a little bit of it. And it will dull it because red and green are complementary to one another. So I'm looking for kind of a grayish color, but on the red side. Let's check that color out. Yeah, that's pretty. So you can see if you were shading an apple, that's perfect. You would use a more muted color or the color right across to add some shadow. Beautiful color. Then we have alizarin gold and hematite violet genuine. I 
Hematite is the granulating color, so I want to make sure that I get enough paint in here so I can see it granulate. There we go. When it's still on the red side, that's perfect. Kind of looks like a kaput mortem color. I'm going to add just a little bit more of the alizarin gold. That's better. If you're ever doing these and you make a mistake or you want the color to be lighter or darker, just while it's wet, just blot it with a paper towel. So just lay this down and blot it and pull off as much as you can that way and let it dry and then you can add the color over it. I've done that numerous times and it always works out great. Look how beautiful it's looking. I love this. This exercise, do you see how valuable it is? Because you wouldn't think that, so far we've only used three major colors, right? But five up here, even with the three and three. Look at the different colors that you've achieved already just by using the Titan Buff, the Yellow Gray, and the Alizarin Gold. Would you have known your colors mixed like that without trying them? I wouldn't because I like to see things. This is the way that I learn by seeing it and doing it and making sure that I understand how they're mixing and coming together. Joyce's Mother Green is next. Such a pretty green. So we got Joyce and Joyce. So it's this one. We have Joyce's Mother Green and Titan Buff. I just want it to be a little bit duller, a little more lighter, muted. Not that much. <laughs> Still want it on the green side, not the Titan Buff side. So there is the Titan Buff. We need to make sure it's different. And I need just a tad more green, I think. That's better. See how much lighter it is than that? But look at the difference here, even though it's the same color mixes. We've got Joyce's Mother Green and Yellow Gray. I want a more yellow color of that. A little more yellow gray. Perfect. Want it to be different than that one. Now we have Joyce's Mother Green and Alizarin Gold. Now remember, these are complementary across from each other on the color wheel. And I do want it to stay on the green side. It's probably gonna make a really ugly, beautiful green. <laughs> these are usually my favorite when I mix complementaries. Let's see. All right, alizarin and green, much different, pretty. I always look at these colors when it mixes the complementary for the green. I always look at it as like the winter color. You know, right before the leaves fall off, that's what a complementary color in green does for me. Really pretty and much different. Joyce's Mother Green and Hematite Violet Genuine. A little more green. Perfect. I want it to be a dark, deep green. Oh, look how rich that is. So this is the original color and you can see the variations. I do have a box over here drawn in half. Let me show you. See that I took another box and then I made a diagonal through it. Some people do color charts like this. So I'm going to use that hematite violet genuine again, that same color. I'm going to remix it so I have enough here. So a lot of people will put 
that mix on the top. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip this brush in water. Just dip it in water. Don't blot it on a paper towel or anything and bring it over here. And what that does is show you the lighter value. So if you have a lot of dark colors, like look at my colors up here. Because I've been painting for 30 years, I don't need to see what the lighter value is going to be. I kind of know that almost instinctively. But if you are someone who's just starting, this will help you tremendously. Seeing the light, what the lighter version will do to that color. And here, it will let you see a lot more possibilities because right now, all these colors kind of look the same. There's slight variations, especially these. Look at like those eight right there, or 16, right? They all kind of look the same. So this is where you would be able to see and distinguish between what color you want to use in the lighter value. It's just another way to do a color chart. So imagine if you did all of this with half, you would have two colors, two values per square. I just wanted to share that with you so that you, if you see color charts like that, that's what they're doing. The last color is Hematite Violet Genuine. This is Daniel Smith color. It is my favorite granulating color. I love this in its pure form because it has kind of a peachy flesh tone under value that I love. But this is a really granulating color too. So it separates with kind of a charcoaly black brown and then it's got that great flesh tone. So I'm gonna do Hematite and Hematite. When they're dry too, I will bring them all up so you can see the beautifulness of each color. When you're using a granulating color, it loves water, so my splashes will do a lot for it. If you don't like splashes, always use a lot of water with your mixing. And it doesn't really show up on like a hot press paper either. It likes a textured paper. I'm going to go ahead and paint this one too while I have that, just straight hematite so that you can see what the lighter vet version of this does. It's so pretty. Dipping my brush in water, not blotting or anything, just bringing it over here and adding more water to it. Wait till you see how lovely that dries. <laughs> I'm already excited. Okay, we've got Hematite and Titan Buff. Just want a lighter version, kind of like a grayed out version. And I want it to be different than that one. So let's see, I want it to be a little darker, yes. See, just a little bolder. Because this is about the, t the Hematite Violet part of it, not the Titan buff. So I want it that much darker. I've got Hematite Violet Genuine and Yellow Gray. You can see it's too much on the yellow side. I gotta change that. Yeah, that's pretty. So this is Hematite and Yellow Gray, so it has to be different. Nope, a little more Hematite. You can see it's still too yellow. That's better. Now we've got hematite and alizarin gold. I'm watching the color that here is the mix of the alizarin and the hematite. So I want it a little different. Or maybe, let's check it out. Yes, it's different, it's a little darker. Just a little hint of red in it. Such a pretty color. 
The last one is Hematite and Joyce's Mother Green. They're so close in value, so this one's a little harder to mix. I've just got to make sure it has a touch of green in it, but not too green. So I want it to be darker than this color. It's got a slight hint of green there. Think of a very dark shadow of like a green pine tree. It's perfect. It's all dry and I really love the values here. Again, I want you to see that this row feels like Titan Buff. This row feels like yellow gray. They're all yellow tones. They're all muted tones here. This one is alizarin gold and you can see it all feels like, like a corally gold. This is Joyce's Mother Green. They are definitely all on the green side. Some are more yellow, some are more brown, some are more muted. This is the Hematite Violet Genuine. They definitely seem more on the darker side, which is exactly what I wanted. You can also see that as they go this way as well, they have their own kind of personalities, right? So these are lighter values, so they should be the lightest of all the values because that is mixed with Titan Buff. These are the yellow gray. These are all mixed with alizarin gold. These are all mixed with the Joyce's mother, and these are all mixed with the hematite. So the hematite feels a little darkest, and these feel a little lightest And as far as rows this way. By making the star of the show by this row, right, I let this color be the star. So if this said blue or indigo, I would want that row to be all indigo. If it said orange, I would want it to look all orange. I don't really care about these. These are just really the mixing colors, but these are the ones that I choose to make the row look like. Again, that's why that looks lighter, all tight and buff colors. It's like the most lightest value that you can get in those colors, and that's what Titan Buff does for me. So let me bring them up close so you can see them. And the hematite is the one with the uh, granulating, so you'll notice it here and on this last row. So this is the Titan Buff row and the yellow gray. See the granulation you're getting in here? See that like kind of apricot color? That is coming from the Hematite Genuine. And you can see here where it looks like little speckles. That is the granulation. Then we have Alizarin Gold and Joyce's Mother Green. Do you see the speckles here? Look at that color. Wow. <laughs> and the last row is the Hematite Violet Genuine. Now you'll see that little peachy undertone. That is from the Hematite. Look at how that one granulated. That's mixing with yellow gray. That's beautiful. And this was mixing with the alizarin gold. Look at those colors in there. This was the Joyce's Mother Green, and this is the Hematite by itself. And then we've got these two over here. Remember, we took half of it and watered it down. And you can see here, look at that lighter value. Isn't that gorgeous? So I hope seeing me do the color this way inspires you to create the most invaluable tool we have, color mixing and understanding our palette. If you were inspired by today's content, please like, comment, or subscribe. Thanks for watching.